Hi guys, so today I want to show you another function that I wrote. I call it renumbering and what it does is it will number groups or ranges of data, ranges of cells. So I'll give you an example. This is a table. It has a class ID column and a student name column and the table is grouped by class ID. So group number one uh, is calculus 101 group number two is English 101 group number three is home ec and group number four is sewing okay so let's say for example that some of these classes will go away and that may happen because maybe it didn't meet the minimum number of students enrolled in the class so let's say for example you needed at least five students in in a class in order to make it happen and so that one only has two students and this one only has two students as well so those are gone so now the table is still grouped properly but the group numbers don't start at one and then we have you know a number missing here in between two and four so in order to keep the table pretty, um, you know, we, we may want to renumber the group column so that this will then become one and the four will then become two. Okay, this is the function that I came up with. Uh, this is the solution to that problem. But before we get started, I want to say that there are two things that are really, really important. First thing is that the table needs to be sorted by group number, number one, and number two, it needs to be sorted from smallest to largest. So that absolutely has to happen before you run the macro. Um, that Obviously that part can be automated, but since I didn't do it, um, I had to do it manually. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add items into my group collection. So my group collection is just a collection, and this is where I set it, set group collection equal to a new collection. And what the collection then is gonna contain is the unique values in column A, in our group number column. So there are two unique values in this column. It's two and it's four, but we're gonna use, um, a little trick so that we only enter two once and we only enter four once even though both of them appear multiple times in the column. So we start off with a loop. I say for i equal to two to last row which is 12. So from two to 12 we're going to loop. So I set the variable item equal to a and then whatever i happens to be depending on where we are. So A2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're going to set it to the value that's in that cell. And then we're going to add it to our collection. So group collection dot add, and then we're going to add item. We're also going to add a key. Okay, so when you add a key, the key has to be a string. So since the item is going to be a number. I actually had to convert it to a string in order for it to work. The key identifies the item, but the key has to be unique. So what happens is when we're here in A2, um, 2 will get added to the collection with the key 2 because I made item the key as well. So 2 gets added to the collection with the key 2 and that adds successfully, but when it comes down here to A3, it will try again to add two to the collection with the key two, but it's gonna fail because we already have something in the collection with the key two. So it's gonna keep failing until it gets to here, and then it's gonna try to add four, the item four into the collection, and the key will be four, and that will be successful, but then it will fail all the way through to the end of the loop. And so that's how we end up with just two um, two values or two items in our collection. Okay, so when it's failing though, when it's trying to unsuccessfully to add 
the additional items into the collection, it is going to throw an error message. So you do want to make sure that you proceed that with on error resume next so that you disable any kind of messaging and then you can once you're finished looping through your worksheet um, go ahead and turn your uh, messages back on with on error on error uh, on error go to zero <laughs> okay so the next thing I want to do is figure out how big my group collection is and so I set the group collection dot count, which is going to tell me the size of the collection. I set that equal to the variable size collection. And then I'm going to loop again. So in this next loop, I'm actually going to start writing back to my spreadsheet. So at the end of it, um, this will be one and this will be two. Oops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and identify the row of the first appearance of the group number two, the value two, and I'm going to try and identify the last instance, the row of the last instance of two within column A. And I'm going to use the match function to do that. So here's start group and end group. So start group is equal to application dot worksheet function dot match and the find value. I'll talk about that in a second. Find value is basically what we're looking for. Um, and then where are we looking for the find value? We're looking at for it within range group num call, which group num call is A to group num call. So basically we're looking for it in the whole column of A. And then when we say zero here at the end, the final parameter of the match function, that means that you want to find the first instance of the find value. To find the end group, we use the same function, application.worksheet function.match, uh, the number that we're looking for. We're looking for it where in range group num call, which is A to group num call A. So we're looking for it in all of column A and uh, where, and we want to find the last instance of it. So the one will return the last instance of whatever our find value is. So the find value I set actually before I run my match functions, um, I go ahead and define my find value right above it. Okay, so find value is equal to A to when J is equal to one. So the first, when we first start this loop, we need to start somewhere. So we're gonna start in A2. So I have to hard code the cell there, the uh, row there. So I, it sells A2, that value, when j is equal to 1, when it's the very first iteration of our loop. After that, um, we're going to be looking for the group num call, in other words, column a, and end group plus 1. We're going to be looking for the value in that cell. Once we define the end group um, from, the, from, the, from a loop, then the next time around, we're going to start with end group plus one. So the end group here will be seven. Seven plus one is eight. And so that's how we keep redefining what we're looking for as we get through all of column A. Okay. Then we finally get to down here where we're actually going to write back to the spreadsheet. So range group number call, which is A, and the start group through group number column, which is A, and the end group, and the value then equals J. Okay, so let's actually run it and see what happens. So right now J is equal to one, so our find value is equal to two. So then we say we want to find the start of the group. So start of the range of cells that all contain the number two. So start group, find value is two within the range A to A, 
the very first in, iter, instance of it. So it's a, it returns to our group of two. So column two, I mean, sorry, row two. And then the end group is seven, right there. And now we're ready to print. So we say range group number call, which is A2 to A7. The value of that range is equal to J. So if I hit F5, voila. And replace the twos with ones. If I hit F5 again, it replaced the fours with two. And so now our group numbers have been renumbered. They're sequential and everything looks pretty again and we didn't have to go line by line adjusting our spreadsheet. Okay, thank you.